Do you stand on the shoulders of giants? I know I do. If you're a painter, you probably do. If you're an American painter, you probably stand on the shoulders of this giant. This is William Merritt Chase. He was born in 1849 and died in 1916. He was eclectic and a brilliant teacher. He established a school in New York City called the Chase School, and that went on eventually to become Parsons School of Design, where I studied illustration. So like I said, I know I stand on his shoulders. Chase taught his students to paint in plein air, in full air. This is exactly one of these paintings. It's painted out on the coast, may have been out on Long Island, and it's very wild and quick and comes from the gut. We're gonna test now, down in this green. And when I say green, what I mean is blue. This varnish is very, very yellowed. By lifting that, we get down to the real color, the real pastel. Completely in love with the initials here. One of the reasons you know it's William Merritt Chase is the way he would add this squiggle at the end of the W over a line, over a dot. It's easier to find his, let's go up here now, it's easier to find his full signature online, but within the signature, you can find that mark next to the W. We have a very, very yellow discolored varnish and a significant amount of dirt in there. I love how thickly Chase ladled on the paint. It looks to me like he was using a palette knife going across the surface. And he's moving almost as fast as the clouds are racing in. You can almost feel the water moving out, and racing back to the shore. Even his lines are pulling you out, out to sea. There's something very interesting in here, probably pentimento. When you have a darker pigment coming up through a lighter pigment as time goes by. Chase may have basically covered this form with one pigment, two or three, as he was putting on the clouds. Maybe he changed his mind. But when it comes through, you get this ghost. We don't know what it was. Perhaps there was a painting underneath. Or perhaps he had a false start changed his mind. We're getting what looks like the red here, but that may be the warmth of the board coming through. Chase, Chase may have put this down without gesso, or there may be very light gesso, or it may have been scraped, but we're going to get some warmth that's going to come through that was not Chase's original intention. That's okay. We don't want to hide these ghosts from the past. They have something to say, we're gonna let them say it. You may be familiar with William Merritt Chase from some of his works in museums. Portraits, very, very large paintings. But how does it feel to encounter one that he did in the wild? Nobody watching, nobody commissioning this. Perhaps it was just an exercise. Seems to be a small loss right there if the rest of the varnish is removed and it is not too far in color from the actual paint, then I might not even end painting. I might leave it as is. If you don't have to add in paint somewhere, then don't add. Let's let this giant do all of the talking. white that is. Not a stormy day at all. The back of this painting is going to tell another story. This is painted on a wooden panel, a prepared wooden panel. You can see the beveled edge. He's thinking about it as a support for a painting, not just a piece of wood he found out back. Someone has misspelled his name. It's okay. We still know it's him. It passed through what was once a reputable gallery. Salander O'Reilly in 2003 was described as the best gallery in the world by a publication. 
Mm. By 2010, Larry Salander was imprisoned at Rikers Island for grand larceny. So we don't know what story this piece had when it passed through his gallery, but we know it was there. My client knows it was there. It's a sad history of that gallery, but that doesn't matter. What matters is this piece is here, and we get to enjoy it, and we get to investigate it.